Hey you guys, this is Jess with Sourceful Journey back with another video. So today I wanted to focus on the topic dealing with tarot cards. Ooh. <laughs> it's really not that bad, you guys. I'm going to share my thoughts about it and some things I'm actually kind of struggling with internally on myself to an extent. I'll be lying to you if I told you otherwise, but uh, yeah, it's just more of a chit chat with this video. So uh, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and just jump right in. So tarot cards, let's talk about it. Tarot cards for quite some time has often been viewed as something that is not of God. It's been viewed as evil, demonic, not a, a tool that one should use. But yet, the very individuals who utilize this tool are the very ones who have the same gift as those who don't use them. They use them as a tool to be able to convey a message to the masses just so they can understand what they're picking up on. It's more of, in my opinion, I want to emphasize this is my opinion, it's more of a tool to simplify the message for the onlookers to understand what is being conveyed in the message, to put it plainly. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna share my story here. So I remember a few years ago, oh, I think maybe over 10 years ago to be exact, it was like in my college days, my undergrad days. I remember I went to this one store and when I was looking around in the store, um, I saw these tarot cards. It was like a small little deck, like a mini deck. I'll never forget this. Mind you, I was living on my own, not living in my mother's house. I was uh, fresh out of college after finishing my undergrad studies. And it was just, just that. Uh, I remember I took the cards home and I felt so compelled. I don't know why I felt like I, so drawn to them, so intrigued by them. And there's been several occasions of this throughout my adult years that I've noticed this. And I remember playing with them, but then at some point, once I was done, because I didn't understand what I was doing with them, at least I, I didn't feel like I understood. Again, remember, I'm coming from a Christian-based background. And so, uh, I played with it for a few minutes and then I put them away. And I remember I went into my, my bedroom. I put them in one of my bins, but I put them like deep towards the bottom and I closed the bin off and I closed the closet door. And I'm thinking to myself like, why did I feel so compelled to do that action? Like I was hiding it from someone. Like what was it that made me feel so ashamed? that I even purchased those little cars, that I even touched them. A lot of it had to do with my upbringing and my household that I was in, again, it's Christian-based, being that we were um, Baptist, you know, evangelical Baptist to be exact. Um, but I just was curious then, so I started kind of looking into finding out more details about past life, like could there have been a connection there why I felt like I had to hide it, hide it right away. I asked around, I spoke with a few people within that space, you know, how you can like call in to speak with a, a psychic reader. And a lot of these people were really good, oh my gosh. And they still are, but a lot of them were like really spot on. I started becoming real curious. It turns out, in reference to one of my past lives, it turns out I was actually a tarot reader. <laughs> I could not believe my ears. I said, that explains it. And the lady that I was talking to at the time, and she was spot on in terms of like sharing details about what I was dealing with currently in my own life without me even telling her much at all. And I was really amazed by that. So I knew, okay, she was onto something. So I had to ask her, you know, why did I feel so drawn to want to purchase those cars? I, she, I made it clear to her, I just didn't understand. I'm like, I feel so drawn to this space for some reason, but yet I feel ashamed. She said, based on what she was able to see, is because it turns out in the past life, I was a tarot reader or I was a psychic. 
Uh, same thing, same space. Follow me on this. But she said at some point I was persecuted because of it. And I can only think back to those times what some of those people, men or women, I mean, meaning women, may have felt when others found out that they had those gifts and how they would have reacted. It's kind of the same if the shoe was on the other foot. How would you react? Especially knowing we've evolved quite a bit in terms of that space in today's time, but compared to where it was hundreds and hundreds of years ago, when people didn't truly understand and they viewed it as being such a bad thing and were persecuted for it. Um, I thought to myself, how would I react if, you know, I knew that I could be persecuted for something like this if I knew. I think I would have reacted the same way then. I would have um, probably felt the need to hide it, like tuck it away in fear that someone would find out which to bring it up to that particular period when I had that conversation with that one psychic over the phone. That made it clear to me why I reacted the way I did after I had purchased the cards in present day. Even with regards to my gift, I'm so grateful for the fact that I don't need to use cards to convey a message. But I still find it even in present day, I'm still intrigued by those cards. So, I don't know. Um, I think it's something that is gonna forever be a part of my genetic makeup, if you will, because knowing that that was something that was a part of what I've done in the past life. Um, I feel like those type of footprints don't just completely leave. It's gonna always be a part of who you are as a being, regardless of which lifetime you move into thereafter. People need to understand that when it comes to the spiritual space, especially with us, it doesn't, it's not a one-stop shop. We've been here a multitude of times in various ways and actually in other locations than just Earth. <laughs> another topic for another day. And actually there's quite a bit of videos and documents and such that is out there right now that people can look into that would pretty much prove this point that I'm making. So I won't even delve into that in this video. It'll be too long of a video. Um, but I say all this to say, um, it definitely opened my eyes up quite a bit uh, in reference to why I'm so intrigued with that space because apparently I have ties to that space from past times as well. Now what's funny is because even with the fact that I'm one that doesn't need those type of tools to be able to pull on information, to pull on energy, um, thoughts, things like that. Sometimes, even from my end, I can end up posting something or saying something and may see someone else touch upon it the next day or that same day or Again, seeing some people that I interact with, see their response, like, how did you know that? <laughs> or like, wait, I was just thinking that, you know, it's just, it's kind of funny. It's just, my answer to that is natural. I, I can't put my finger on it, but it's just a natural gift. And please understand that those who are truly, uh, truly hold the gift, um, they do not need the tools. Please do understand that. One who feels that they need the tools. Hmm. That's telling within itself. Because in all actuality, a lot of us don't. When it comes to really connecting and getting the, the answers we need to pass on, things like that, we don't need to lay so heavily on those items because, again, thinking back to the earlier times, when those type of individuals walk this earth or any of the other planets for that matter. They didn't have cards, you guys. They didn't have uh, a crystal ball, none of that. They were able still to, they were still able to connect with source, with God um, and a spiritual space without all that. And that's why I can laugh 
when people think that, oh, in order to really get an accurate read or get an accurate uh, detail or description out, you need those tools. No, you don't. No, you do not. I can say that for a fact. Um, I love the fact that it surprises people. I really do. I think that's the part that's just, it tickles me to see the responses. Um, and that's another thing. One who truly holds the gift, they're not going to gloat about it. I mean, if you're asked, if we're asked about it, of course, we'll tell you. We'll be honest. But to go around advertising it for the world to see. Mm -mm. We don't tend to do that. We're more, at least for me, I take more of a humble approach. I like to be more under the radar. And when my pain is asked, in terms of my own analysis or what I picked up in terms of energy, I'll share it with you without a doubt. And I tend to be descriptive, very detailed. Sometimes it makes people nervous, especially if they know it early on, like, oh, she has that gift. They're afraid to be in my my space, my, my energy, because they know chances are she's going to probably pick up on something I do not want her to pick up on. <laughs> so, but it doesn't work that way. You have to understand that too. Um, how should I describe this? If we're given a nudge to, if we're given a nudge to, to tap into something we will, or it just happens naturally, I should say. It's not anything that's forced, know that, okay? But, um, do understand we don't take it, we don't take advantage of the gift. We don't do it to be invasive. You know, like to be, uh, or I guess you could say, like intruding in some way. It's, it's nothing of that nature. It's more so, um, what the heck? Just keep it simple here. I want to keep it simple. It's just natural. It's one of those things that we'll feel a nudge, like if it's something we need to tap into, or if it's something that we're being notified to pay close attention to, we will. Um, and even when it comes to what we see visually, it'll let us know, like, okay, you might want to pay close attention to this person, or, um, to what's actually happening over there or pay close attention um you know to what's taking place right around the corner or you know it's, it's just like little things like that well it's just i call it nudges so to put it plainly it's just that nudges four 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 as i just said that now i've been asked on a, several occasions actually would i ever incorporate using tarot cards into my channel. I feel like I'm running from it still. I still even feel in present day, knowing the history that I have with being tied to this space and knowing that for some reason I feel such a connection to those tools. I don't know. There's still a part of me that feels unsure about it because I'm still kind of dealing with that. It's kind of like a past trauma, past, uh, I guess you could say past life trauma, to be more specific, because of the whole thing with knowing that that's what happened to me before when I was an actual psychic or in tarot reading in that space, like knowing that that's actually what happened. And somehow it's carried on into this this lifetime where I'm still unsure. Just saw an orb flying a moment ago. Um, okay, okay, I'm going to talk on this. So I still... The funny part I struggle with, you guys, is because... A lot of people are amazed at what I can pick up on in terms of without using tools. And I, I'm forever grateful for that and thank you guys for that. The feedback has been amazing. Um, but I still struggle with internally if I should. And you wanna know what's even more interesting because I find it that when I touch the cards, for some reason I feel, I don't know, it's kind of hard to describe, but only those who are in the space who know what I'm talking about. You feel like there's such a strong connection to it. Like for some reason, I, I don't know. I feel so connected to them. In some way, it's something like some type of, you feel like some type of energy when you're touching them, at least I do. And it's not like a, a bad thing. It's just like, you feel like it's something that you, 
it's like being connected to something that you're passionate about. Like let's say for instance, someone who who loves golf as an example, or who loves basketball. Somehow when they hold that golf club or they hold that basketball, they feel like it's a part of who they are. They feel some some type of uh, connection to it, right? I love what I do here in terms of being on this channel. I love being able to do motivational speaking, being um, a coach as well in terms of um, consultations and things like that. But also when it comes to this side of the spectrum, when it comes to the spiritual side, I, for some reason, feel a strong connection towards the cards too. And to answer the question in reference to some of you guys who had asked me already, could I foresee myself incorporating that on this channel? Um, it's TBD. I think that's something I have to think about. I have to really think about because I still feel like on the fence and it's again, it's dealing with that past trauma because I still feel, I don't know why. I don't know why I still feel a certain way about it. I think, I think I'm getting there. And that might be something I will start to incorporate after all. Um, it's just really finding ways to get beyond that trauma. And it's so crazy because you would think something that took place in a previous lifetime, you wouldn't think that that type of trauma would still carry on into your present day. Uh, but then again, we're talking about this as past life. So of course, you know, we've been here a multitude of times in terms of our past lives. You know, it doesn't seem so far-fetched when you think about it. Same can be said when you feel such a strong connection to an individual. And it could be someone you have not even met in this lifetime. Oh, we can talk about that. <laughs> and yet, um, you're like, why do I feel so drawn to this person? Like, this is very bizarre. <laughs> that dude. You can't put your finger on it, but you know there has to be a stronger reason behind why you feel so intrigued with this individual, why you feel so drawn to this individual and what they do. Um, and the funny part about it, because while you may be feeling that way, 99% of the time or 99% chance they are experiencing what you're experiencing too. Think about that. And you don't even have to talk to them about it. You know, it's, it's crazy how that stuff works. It's just this whole space in general is, it's interesting. Once you start to dig deep and do a little research. Well, that's all for today's video. So again, when it comes down to the notion of, you know, utilizing tarot cards, I don't see it as a bad thing at all. Um, I think it's a great way to be able to expand on the message that you're trying to convey to the masses that you're talking to at that time or to give you a better understanding of what you are enduring in your own present day um, now as far as with myself again i was really amazed by the details that the psychic shared with me that it turns out that i was in that space in the past life and unfortunately well unfortunately you know was one that was persecuted because of it. Very sad. Um, but, you know, going forward, um, you know, to know that I still have some level of trauma from that past experience and how it's still in uh, some way still trickled into my present day. Um, could I ever get over that fear? Of utilizing those tools again even though I don't really need to I mean obviously I don't you guys kind of figure that out already in my videos right like if the message needs to come out it's gonna come out one way or another and it has it has but to have the tools such as those cards to incorporate in my readings did I just say readings I mean incorporating my videos I'm so sorry um, could that be the case going forward? 
It's a lot to chew on. I'm thinking about it. I am. If I'm ever in a predicament where someone would ask me to, just for them, I would do it. I would do it. Just knowing that I know I have a strong connection to them. For some reason, even with that small deck, now that I think about it, I ended up throwing it away. I think it was like maybe a few months later I threw it out because I just felt like it was so wrong. I shouldn't be holding these cards. And it's so crazy because I was living by myself. No parents around, no, uh, no kids, none of that. And yet I still felt so bad about having them. But yet, um, present day, I still find myself drawn to them. It's so crazy how that works. So I think that that's a sign within itself that it's truly a part of who I am and I need to quit trying to tuck it away. Quit trying to hide it. We'll see. We'll see you guys. I will keep you posted. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to give you guys thoughts about that, especially in regards to that space when it comes to utilizing those type of tools, such as a tarot card, well, tarot cards, or when it comes to using um, one of those crystal balls or um, the pendulums, you know, things like that. Um, what are you guys thoughts about that? Definitely don't hesitate to leave your comments in the comment section below here or on the other platforms I utilize. Um, emails are still just as welcome. You can still continue to do that. I love that with the emails. Uh, consultations are still open. So if it is something that's of interest to you, definitely take advantage. Thursday and Friday, I have completely blocked off. Uh, so there'll be no appointments for that those two days. But yeah, I'd like to hear what you guys have to say. So with that being said, uh, I'm definitely seeing you guys with love and light and I'll see you in the next video.